Since my childhood, I was told stories about the men and women of the Holy Scriptures. I was often told about these people who, with their lives, they walk this earth in a particular fashion. And one that isn't thought up out of their own spiritual creativity, but one that drew these people toward God from a place that was entrenched deep in their core. As a child, I would get glimpses of rights and wrongs based off of the content of the stories surrounding these men and women. I was able to see some things that God approved of and disapproved of. I was able to see the answer clearly that not only did God exist, but He in fact wants me to become friends with Him and most importantly, become a son unto Him. So this portrait series is my attempt to honor the faith and what it is to be a hero of faith. And I call it heroic, uh, not because of what they themselves accomplished, but what our living God has accomplished through them using their faith. Although there are many, many more people to this collection in reality, I am only representing the ones whose stories or testimonies had a particular impact in my life growing up as a child. And I think there's something important about being a child and receiving these accounts of what God did through their lives. Not only does it confirm the reality of God, but it shows His intent for us as well. There is an importance about our younger generation or the generation behind us learning the testimony of what God did. The scriptures say in Joshua that if this doesn't happen, then a generation forgets of God. And because they forget Him, they fall snared to the idols of the land. This is the importance of not only sharing testimony, but sharing it for all intensive purposes to the generation behind us so that they come to know their God who is the only true God. These men and women I have chosen to paint are stemming from the remembrance of the accounts I have held with me since childhood. Their lives have showed me something valuable that I have sought to guard and keep close and most importantly sought to walk out the truths of what was revealed in their accounts. Ultimately, these men and women showed me it was possible to live life with God, that the God of heaven would dwell with men and move on their behalf. And I sought to be worth it to be one who gave my entire life over to serve this God as well. Then through these accounts and details, we see that this God who made himself known has set up a plan to walk with and recover all men everywhere who would believe in his offering for peace and reconciliation. That is Jesus the Christ, who would be sent to us by this loving God as a sin offering to atone for all the sins of men. I was able to believe this because I was already convinced of God and his goodness and overall government. And I trusted this and I trusted him and his ways were higher than our own ways. And I knew that if this was what he was wanting to do now, that I must believe because he has shown me no other reason not to. I saw that there was a life that was more vivid and real that I was able to be living in. And I was not living it. I also never saw it around me. I only heard people teaching about the ones who were living it. And in deep down inside me, I knew that this life was one I ought to live as well. And I remember making a covenant with God then, that if this life was in fact able to be grabbed and lived in with Him, then I must have what these people had with Him. And I'd be willing to give myself to Him just to live truly. I would read scripture and believe what I read and keep the faith that was with all of these accounts, that it was all possible and still able to be accomplished. Looking back now, I realize I was making him my prize and my inheritance. This is a very good thing for a young man to do. So I owe something of gratitude to the men and women who before me gave up their earthly lives to pursue and follow the one who leads from the throne of heaven. <laughs> and there is something to say about responding in an honorable way that does your words justice when you say, I honor you. Because there lies after that a response 
and the thought of the heart that whispers, we will see, won't we? And a life surrendered out of holy fear and love and obedience is what is expected. My faith of what I know to be true has had witnesses of this truth since the beginning. It is not just my word. It is the word of the Lord your God, which has had testimony after testimony of those who witnessed the truth of his word manifest and bring about exactly what it said it would. There was always an experiential knowledge of his word that unfolded in the lives of these witnesses. The scriptures say we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses and we should live our lives in a manner that agrees with this awareness and reality so that even we would be in line with the truth who is and was and always will be. In many ways, I feel like one who has been there since the beginning, hearing his dealings from start to finish from the Old Testament. And I came to believe him then. Then to see what all his intention was as it unfolds to fulfillment through the person, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, my Messiah, the Savior of the world. Watching that come about through what you find in the New Testament. I feel like a Jew who has been part of this since day one, who has accepted their salvation through Christ our Lord. And I feel like a Jew inwardly, as the scriptures say. This entire display isn't meant to lift up men, but the God of these men. And our God shows forth through lives of men, for our God is spirit and life. So everything that points to him is in fact endowed with the life of him. There's always been truth for us to dwell in. And these people have in fact served as eyewitnesses to this truth in one way or another. And these accounts filled my childhood with pondering, curiosities, and meditations deep within my own heart for what their lives were showing. Ultimately, they all in one way or another pointed to Jesus the Christ. Therefore, I was able to welcome him with a lover's embrace, for I felt like he and I have known one another since I was a child. In this manner, I have, through faith in these things and his word and actions, I have entered in his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, and that like a child. For I would always keep dear to my heart the testimony of our God, for he is mighty to save, and his glory fills the earth. And men would be foolish and empty to forsake such a life of reality and truth. And to reject the gift of grace which saves you from your shallow graves of empty life full of cheap distractions. Well, this would be the, the most terrible deceit for which you could persuade yourself. To accept a new life is to live an entirely different way. And this is the only way now made possible through the Holy Spirit who gives himself for our comfort and teaching of this new life which exists within the grace of our living God. This is the new life of Christ himself. For all these men and women somehow served as a type pointing to the one who is to come, the Holy One of Israel, Jesus, Yahshua, the Messiah, Son of God, crucified for the forgiveness of sins and resurrected on the third day to ascend to the right hand of the Father, established as our high priest now. This is what I see. Our lives, like these men, are to be lived in a manner that shows or points to the one who is to come. We are to reflect the life, possess the life of Christ, for it's 
to live through us. We are to desire him who is still to come. All his promises are true, and so shall this one be as well. So let these paintings and stories and testimonies serve you as a witness of the truth and understand what is happening right in front of your eyes. And as the messages grace your ears, that evidence of this life I've spoken of is attainable and through the only one who is worth your life, the person of Christ Jesus. You have been given plenty of evidence to live without excuse. Accept the truth and gift of repentance. Without it, there is no salvation. For you must turn and head to your Savior. This is your invitation to take into serious consideration and weigh your life before the highest judge. If you are found wanting, take him who is the only one who is able to save you from your destruction because his life has overcame death and the grave. And shall you only take him in thought or in word? No, no, no. Take him also in deed. Be a wise man who would build his life or house upon the rock. And by doing so, your faith will have saved you. We are saved by grace through faith in him who is worthy and the only high king who is mighty to save and who shows steadfast love to those who love him for thousands of generations. His name is Yahweh, the great I am, the holy one who sits upon the throne. May all glory and honor and praise be ministered back unto him. Amen.